Hey everyone, it's Scott. Uh, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to do uh, a deep dive into point defense for Distant Worlds 2. So I have a video out there already on how to custom design ships, so please do check that one out. Um, and what we're going to focus on today is when you're custom designing a ship, uh, which PD, which point defense type of weapons do you want to add, if any, and uh, what they do, and what's the best one. So I'm actually going to run a little experiment during the video, and we're going to try out five of the six uh, common ones, and I'll explain why in a second, uh, and see how they do in a battle. And um, the first thing I want to do is just tell you where we're going to focus. So I, I picked Tier 2, Tier 3. Let me show you what that means. So if you come up to Research here... Uh, and I move all the way to the left. So tier two is second column and tier three is third column, right? So this is about where you'd be, you know, a little after the early game, early mid game, somewhere around there. And it's where, you know, a lot of the fun happens. You've got destroyers. Uh, in fact, I'm going to uh, show you the, the higher level destroyer. So I'm going to build around a fleet destroyer. So this would be early mid game. And the, typically, you might have all Tier 3 uh, technologies or many Tier 3 technologies researched. And so those are the PDs that I focused on. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is show you a little chart of all the different PDs. So if you take a look at this chart up on the screen, um, you'll see that there are uh, six types available when you get to Tier 2 and Tier 3. And they all have different... Uh, attributes. Some are large in size, some have better range, and one of them, um, the blocking field generator, actually sh uh, intercepts more things, more weapons than just missiles and fighters. So most PD will attack seeking weapons. That could be missiles. I think even uh, torpedoes could be seeking too. So you'll see that description in any of the weapons when you're looking in the research screen or in the design screen. Uh, and fighters. So if you look here in this row, uh, these two rows, you'll see what their damage per second is against these types of uh, things, fighters or seeking weapons here. And for the blocking field generator here, you can see what their, what its damage per second is on direct fire weapons uh, and beam weapons, right? So um, it's the only one that does all four of those. But of course, it sacrifices, as you can see, uh, a lower damage rate per second. Now, there are other things that get involved. For example, at longer range, some of these have strengths or damage per second that drops off. So I'm not going to really get into that um, level of detail. But we're at a pretty good level of detail here to get at least a feel for what these weapons do. And I'm going to show you them in action, too. So... Uh, the other thing I want to show you about uh, this table here, and by the way, this table is in my uh, Scott's DW2 guide, so I strongly recommend if you haven't uh, downloaded that to check it out. There's a link in the description. It's also, if you just go to the Matrix Distant World 2 forum, it's one of the sticky uh, topics there, so it's easy to find. And um, I keep updating it very frequently, so make sure you go back there to check it. And... Uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos like this, very short, small videos on a specific topic, particularly topics that I thought weren't so obvious when I first started playing. So anyway, back to my chart here. Um, we're going to look at a few things. So you can see the size difference, and that's a big part of what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, so a size 15 or a size 19 is a big difference from a size 10. So the buckler repeating blaster, for example, is the smallest of these, and it's size 10. So you can fit two of those, right, for every interceptor missile. So even though the interceptor missile has a nice long range uh, and some good damage, uh, particularly against shields, so there's a shield bypass where some of its damage will go through the shields even before the shields are down. I have another video I'm going to do on that, on weapons and what bypass means when it's negative and positive. Okay. But um, the price for that particular one, the interceptor missile, is that it's 19 in size, right? So I can fit two bucklers where I can only fit one interceptor missile. Uh, so the size is a really important thing here. And then, of course, their damage rates per second is uh, a big deal. So I color-coded it all so you can see. Green is, of course, best case or really good. 
and yellow is kind of in the middle, and of course red is uh, undesirable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up five, I've already set up five fleets that have 10 destroyers with these various PDs, except for the ion pulse blaster. I'm not going to do that one. I'll explain later. But for the other five, I'm going to I built these fleets and we're going to see how they do against three pirate bases. Uh, so I'll get to that in a second. But I just wanted to uh, mention that I could have just put PDs on these ships, but that's not how I'm going to play the game. So what you're going to see here, I'm going to show you in a second, I'm going to show you the designs on all these different fleets. What you're going to see here is a typical loadout, right? A typical design that I would use with PDs and other weapons because the other weapons will also shoot at fighters, for example, but they're much less effective, right? So there's more bang for your buck on a PD weapon. So winning the battle or losing the battle with these 10 ships, there's differences a little bit in their their what 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 uh, weapons and, and equipment I have on because for different PDs, I can fit different layouts of weapons, right? So, you know, it's really going to be a comparison of a typical fleet destroyer, which is the high-end destroyers, tier, you know, the second destroyer you research, um, one of the three hulls that come with that. And it's really going to focus on the total ship, right? So it's going to have the PD, but it's also going to have maybe a different weapon loadout because I could fit more weapons or less weapons. So it's really, if you try to use this PD on a destroyer of this class, of this hull, uh, the fleet destroyer, what could you make, you know, what's the best case you could make in your design using this PD? And let's see how that design does in combat. All right, so this next chart I'm going to put up is going to show you my five fleets and what of, you know, the five PDs that I put in each of these fleets, right? So you can see here, fleet one has 10 DDs. They all have 10 DDs. DD stands for destroyers. And these are the weapons I, and shields and everything I was able to get into this design. Now, I didn't show... Uh, reactors and engines and all that. I just, because I didn't want to fill the screen with all that. So I just put the weapons, the armor. I think the armor and the shields are the same for all, so it's not a big deal. But um, there's a medium star fighter bay, so they're going to fight these, uh, the, the fighters. And uh, so, for example, for the first fleet, I was able to fit three Epsilon torpedoes, medium size, and a blocking field generator, right? Because the blocking field generator is pretty big. If you go to my fleet two, which is the buckler repeating blaster, I was able to fit two of them because they're very small, right? On If you go back to my other chart, or if you look in the guide while we're doing this, uh, it's only a size 10. So I was able to fit two of those and still maintain three medium size Epsilon torpedoes, okay? Go to the fleet three and you'll see for the Sentinel multi-beam, uh, I was able to fit two of them, but I couldn't fit three medium size torpedoes, right? Because they're slightly bigger. So I was only able to fit two mediums and a small Epsilon torpedo. It's Fleet 4, who's got the interceptor missile, really a problem with size here. So um, I was only able to fit one of them, right? And then three medium torpedoes. And then on the fifth fleet for um, the point defense cannon version two, I was only able to same as, I was able to fit two of them, but I was only able to fit two medium torpedoes and a small torpedo. But with the extra leftover room, because I was in between torpedo sizes there, I put a countermeasure system in. So you could say it's not fair because Fleet 3 and Fleet 5 have countermeasure systems. But the point here is, what would you typically be able to design your torpedo your destroyers with given this particular PD, right? And so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our first fleet, which has a blocking field generator. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a unique PD because it can shoot at all the types of weapons that there are and fighters at the cost of a weaker attack across all of them. Um, so I'm going to keep it on the screen here. I'm going to keep the uh, the loadout here of all the weapons and what PD I have on there as well as the, um, the stats about it. And then as the battle progresses, you'll see it in action and we'll see what happens. Now I've picked... This could be the same for all five fleets. I've picked three fighter bases here. I just uh, edited them in and they have uh, 16 uh, fighters. They have uh, interceptors and bombers each, right? And then uh, my ships, of course, have also fighters. So they, in fact, they have uh, four interceptors and four bombers each and there's 10 of them. So we actually outnumber them, but they're, they're 
abilities or their their fighters are a little better than ours. So like I said, the PD is not the only thing that's going to be shooting at the fighters, right? But it's the question is, what difference is it going to make compared to the other ones? And let's see, you know, I'm going to see at the end, how did my fleet survive? Did it take a lot of damage? Was it a quick um, destruction of the pirate ship, uh, pirate bases, or did it not even destroy them based on what PD I installed? Okay, so let's see how the buckler generator works. I'm going to uh, select my 10 ships here. I'm going to let the game run. And I'm going to move towards them. I'm not going to jump right to them. So I'm going to tell my ships to move towards them. I want to make sure that my tactics are uh, set to nearby. So I'm going to make sure I change that. Okay. All right. And they're going to be moving in here kind of slow. So I'm going to speed up the game a little bit. Here they come. And if you watch, as they get closer, the uh, fighters are going to come out of the uh, pirate bases pretty quickly. Uh, my fleet will launch their fighters. And then I'll slow it down a little bit so you can see the actual um, the color of the uh, blocking field uh, when it's shooting at the enemy fighters. Okay, so they're getting pretty close. <clears throat> All right, now the pirate bases are starting to fire on my ships, as you can see. <clears throat> they're going to launch their fighters very soon. I'm going to move my fleet up closer here. And there go their fighters, okay? So there's from the first base, second base, there they go. And I'll slow the game down a little bit so you can see in action here. Let's take a look. So those are my torpedoes. As I mentioned, they're going to fire the torpedoes. through. There goes a blocking uh, generator there, blocking field generator. Okay, the, right? And it's a big mess. It's hard to follow. I mean, my fighters are there fighting their fighters. Um, they're still heading towards the bases. Most of my torpedoes right now are being used on the fighters. And of course, also the PD is firing at the fighters. All right. If you quickly take a look here at, they've only got five interceptors left in the first base, five interceptors, one bomber here, and all 16 left. I don't think they even launched maybe, or maybe they're just launching now. So they've been pretty effective, right? It's taken a bunch of them down. Uh, I am going to speed the game up a little bit because I don't want to spend all day on this. I want to make a nice quick video. Let's see what happens. If I click on my fleet here, we can see that it's taken pretty pretty healthy damage here. It's decided to take the... I think I lost one. And they've still got fighters. They've still got four there. Okay, that's it. They only have four left. Four fighters left. Now they're down to one. And they're almost destroyed. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pause the game and take a look at how we did, right? So, you know, we took them out pretty quickly. I felt like it took out the fighters pretty quickly, but we did take some damage. We, uh, 84%, 77%, 47%, that's really damaged. And there's, uh, oh, there's still 10. Okay, we didn't lose a ship. I think what happened is the pirate bases uh, launched um, uh, one of their own ships. So these these uh, this test got a little skewed by that, but not much. So they took a little bit of damage, but they did pretty well. The blocking field did pretty well. Um, okay, let's, let's go to the next one. Okay, I reset up the battle, uh, but now I have a different fleet. This is my buckler fleet, I call it, because it's got the uh, buckler repeating blaster PD. Okay, it's a very small size, 10, so I was able to fit two of them. You can see the design on the screen. And we're going to uh, attack the base, see what happens. Again, same number of uh, fighters for the three... Uh, pirate bases. Let's see what happens. All right, they're launching their fighters already. I'm going to move them here. Slowly move my fleet. I still want them to jump in there and come in disorganized. So I'm kind of I'm going to make sure. Yep, we're all, set. all right. So you can see. Let's zoom in a little bit. See the difference in the weapon color here. Let me slow it down a little. Those are my torpedoes, the yellow shots, of course. Oh, there it is, the red, see the red? That's my uh, buckler repeating blaster, the red ones. There it goes again, you can see it, all right? And they're shooting at the fighters. Of course, my fighters are fighting with their fighters too. It's a big mess, right? And they're also still using their torpedoes in the fighters. But we'll see what a difference the buckler repeating blaster makes. Okay, let me speed it up a little bit. Right. 
They're getting in range. They're starting to shoot at the bases. Um, yeah, let's just pause it really quick. Take a look. How are they doing? Uh, they're down to six here, right? They started with uh, 16. There's none left on this base and down to seven here. So they took it out pretty quick. They took out a lot of fighters pretty quick. Let's see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, keep it over here. Yeah, this one has uh, eight left, so I'll keep it here. All right, so let's let it run. Okay, they lost a bomber. They're still fighting it out. Down to four now. All right. All right, and my fleet's doing okay. They're taking damage. Nothing serious. Okay, and that's it. So let's pause and take a look at what happened. So, up oh, about this, oh, a little bit, oh, about the same. This one has down to 54% health and 75% health. Uh, not much difference, right? Not much difference there. Um, I felt like it went a little quicker, but they took about the same amount of damage. So, I don't know. Might call it even. Uh, we'll see. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, now let's check out the Sentinel multi-beam uh, PD. And because it's slightly bigger, I was forced to go with a smaller torpedo in one of my torpedo bays, but I had a little left over, so I put a countermeasure system in. Uh, and so, you know, it's again, it's not comparing apples to apples every time, but it's, a, you know, like I said earlier, it's what you could possibly fit using these different PDs, at least when you're at Tier 2. Um, Research now. Later versions, I don't think they change size. Believe it or not, I think they just get more features, right? They get better attack ratings and things. So I don't think they get smaller size. But there may be a PD later on that's a little bit different. But for now, again, mid early mid game, this is where we're at. All right. So uh, a couple of things here. I got to just make sure I set my formation to be near my uh, engagement range to be nearby. And I want to. I think I'm at peace with these guys, so I'm going to stop that. canceled it so now they'll be aggressive at me okay good and so let's let it run and see what happens grab my fleet and i'm going to tell it to move i don't want them to jump right in because it wouldn't be the same as the other one so i want them to kind of just move towards it towards the fight the uh pirate bases and see what happens okay. speed it up a little bit oh it already is at four okay all right same as before they starting to fire first there go their fighters. They launch their fighters. We're launching our fighters. Okay, let me slow it down and take a look. Here they come. So they're going to meet our fighters out here. We don't have as many, and I don't think they're as good quality, so I think they usually are going to beat my early tech fighters here. All right, let's take a look at the actual PD, what it looks like. Oh, yeah, it's that beam. See? That big yellow beam here, because that's not my... My torpedoes are these other yellows, but that yellow beam, and it's got a nice range on it, so... Let's see how it's doing. Uh, they're still got all their fighters. We lost a few there. Okay. So let, let me speed it up. Let's see how my fleet's doing. They're not taking too much damage. Okay. Not bad. A little lag there. Right here they come. I've got a disabled ship, looks like, already. Uh, nope. I don't know why he's not attacking. Okay, they're down to three, zero, and zero. Okay, went pretty quick. All right, let's check out our damage situation here. So if I double click here. Uh, 85, 94, 52. Not, not much different from everybody else, right? Um, seemed like their fighters went a little quicker, but I am speeding it up, so it's not apples to apples there either. But uh, they took a lot of damage, but not too bad. Not too bad. So not a world of difference. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, our fourth one is the Interceptor missile. Now this is a 19 size, so we were only able to fit one. We did. We're able to keep three medium torpedoes, and that's it, right? So we weren't able to add any countermeasure systems. So it's one PD because it's twice as big as some of the other ones. It's also a tier three, 
Whereas the last two that we just checked out that did pretty well, it was only tier two. So that's going to come into our evaluation at the end as well. All right, I'm going to move the fleets forward. Let's see what happens. We expect everything to be the same as far as their reaction to us. Um, they have all their fighters. Yep. And let's see if there's any difference. Now the range on this one is longer than all the other ones. This is a range of 1,520. So we should see uh, missiles and these are uh, seeking weapons. So they're actually going to... Yeah, there they go. Let's slow it down a little bit so we can see better. So they're shooting missiles actually at these fighters, right? They're seeking missiles. As well as they're shooting their torpedoes. Yeah, so it's these little these little ones here, I believe, that they're shooting. Okay, looks like they're uh yeah, it looks like we lost some maybe already. Let's see, let's move up a little bit. Are they disabled? No, they're just taking their time to get here. Okay. Uh they still have a lot of fighters left. Yeah, a lot of fighters, right? Eight seven, six one, six two. So I feel like they didn't take out as many as before. I'm going to speed it up a little bit and see what happens here. Yeah, they definitely did not take out as many fighters as the other groups have. And I feel like they're getting damaged pretty badly. Uh, yeah. Ah, we, well, we lost some. Okay, wow. They're not even taking down. And again, they, they still have three medium torpedoes, as you can see. So that didn't change. It's just that they did not destroy as many fighters. Yeah, they're still left. They've got eight here, six here, and five here, and we're losing our fleet here. So the interceptor missile, not as far as I'm concerned, not a good PD at this point in the game. Wow, it's a big difference. Okay. Let's end this depressing massacre here. I think I only have, yeah, I got a lot of disabled ships here. So as you can see, I mean, I could have kept going. Um, let's see, 80, 46, 55, 79, 100, 90, 47, and I'm missing, uh, three of them, I think. Yeah, I've already lost three. So the, these guys had to run because they were so damaged that their retreat order was when they start losing components, I got to get out of here. So even though I still have them left, they're not very effective. And I don't think I would have taken out the three pirate bases. So, and you can see how many fighters they still have left. They've got nine there, seven here, and seven. So that was a big difference between the last three, really. Um, so not one I'm going to recommend. All right, let's check out the last one. Okay, so for the last one, we're going to test the uh, Point Defense Cannon version 2. This is a tier 3 weapon. It is size 13, so it's bigger than the other ones. But I was able to fit two of them in this design. Uh, again, at the sacrifice of one of my torpedoes, had to go from medium to small. and I, But a little, with a little extra uh, leftover size, right? Because this is all about fitting it in the uh, fleet destroyer's maximum hull size. So with a little extra leftover, I was able to put in countermeasure systems. All right. So let's see how this fleet does. Let's let the game run. Tell them to get closer. The pirate bases have already started firing on us. I'm going to speed the game up a little bit. All right, here come their fighters. So let's take a look at what my uh, PD looks like. Let's see if we can see it. So this is a direct fire PD. So let's see what they look like. Get them a little closer. Yeah, right now they're busy fighting my fighters. And then they'll come at my ships. Let's speed it up a little bit. Okay, there go my torpedoes. A little bit of lag there. Did I zoom in? Okay, yeah, the white thing. See the little white ones? There they go. There's the PD. All right, they're direct fire. All right, let's see how they're doing. So how what they've lost so far. Uh, yeah, they lost about half, I guess, or a little less than half. All right, they're still doing okay. Let's speed it up to see what happens. 
Oh, my ship's doing. They're fine. Little damage there. All right. How, oh, they're down to four fighters. They still got 11 here and five. All right, they're going pretty quick. Certainly much quicker than the interceptor missile was. Down to two, down to eight, and down to four. Okay, they're taking the fighters out pretty quickly. They're doing damage to the bases. They're not too hurt. Got one ship hurt pretty bad. Let's see what happens. I'm sure they're out of fighters. Yeah, there's one left. Two left. And I'm taking some damage here. Not much. About the same. Speed it up. All right, one base down, two bases down, and the final base down. Okay. All right, let's pause and take a look at how we did. So I felt like they did. I felt like the point defense cannon did uh, just as well, about as well as the other two. Uh, the first three, actually, the first three. Let's see damage here, 100%, 61%, 100, 100. All right, it, it fared pretty well. Not bad at all. Okay, and uh, yeah. All right, so let me put them all back up on the board here so we can compare them, and let's talk about the results. So I think everyone did okay, right? Everybody did pretty well at fighting off the fighters uh, with the exception of the interceptor missile, which I thought performed uh, poorly, right? In fact, the fleet didn't even destroy the pirate bases. But here's what I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna end up picking. I'm gonna say that my favorite is the buckler repeating blaster, and I'm gonna for a couple of reasons. I don't think it performed much better, if better at all, than the other four. Um, but it has a huge advantage that it's only size ten, and it's also tier two, right? So that means it's quicker to research. You can get this earlier than the tier three weapons, and it's size ten. You can easily fit two in there. And you don't have to sacrifice any of your torpedo sizes from medium to small. So if you look at this uh, loadout here, um, I think this is the best. I think it's the it's the smallest, it's the best, it's tier two, so you can research it quickly. I don't think any of the other ones hold up to it. I don't think the other ones are bad. There is one advantage with the blocking field generator, which, by the way, performed pretty well with only one of them on board, right? Because it couldn't fit more than one. Um, but it is tier three. So it takes a little longer to get to, but its advantage is that it does shoot at other weapons besides fighters and missiles. It shoots at beams and direct fire weapons. Um, so we're not testing how it's doing against those, although um, I wasn't paying attention enough to see the pirate bases, what they're firing. Um, look like torpedoes maybe, but um, I still think I'm still going to go with the buckler repeating blaster is my favorite. You may have a different view of it. But uh, I think the only thing to really avoid here, though, above all, is the interceptor missile. I think that performed poorly. Again, this is mid to uh, early to mid game that we're talking about here. So you know you've you've gone out, maybe you conquered one other colony. Um, so it's not you know late game. There are different versions. The sizes do not change to the, to the best of my recollection. So the size issue is still a uh, thing, but they do get better features and so or better abilities. Um, so, you know, they may, one may improve over another, and we could certainly test that at another time or another video. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about really quickly is why I didn't pick the Ion Pulse Blaster to even test. And if you look at the chart here, the only reason is it's got minus 25% shield pass-through. So what that means is the only 75% of its damage is going to affect the shields. The shields are going to repel 25% of the damage from the Ion Pulse Blaster. Now, it does get an armor bypass later, which means even before the armor is damaged, some of the damage will go to the hull, and that's nice, but it's not enough to compensate for it. And it's size 12, right? So we talked about size being an important thing here. I don't see a huge advantage to being size 12 here um, and also having that shield uh, reduction of damage. And so that's why I'm not even considering it. But um, And I did test it. I did not see a huge difference in the results, but... Uh, again, at size 12 it's just, and, and tier 3, it's just not as appealing to me as the buckler repeating blaster. Uh, so I will cover in another video what the bypass means um, in both directions when I cover my weapons video. So do take a look for that video when it comes out. Uh, and if you subscribe, then you'll get a notification when it comes out. And that's about it. Don't forget to download my guide. I do have all of these charts that you saw in-game are all directly off my guide. So you can take a look at them and refer to them later. 
and I will be updating the guide as I always do over time. So check back often. I'll do a mid to late game uh, PD review at some point or at least a chart for it. Um, and so I look forward to talking to you on the forum. Good hunting.